Uh, is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Who it is? I've only, I've only got Raggy's beers, wines, and spirits in the house. Thank Believe you very it. much. Thank you very much for taking part in this. Very, very much appreciated, my man. Um, how are you doing? Oh, oh, brilliant. Thank you. Just finished the old glass one. And uh, yeah, it's been a good day. The, the beer room actually looks like a proper pub again now, instead of being like a hole as it's been just recently. Um, yeah, it's all set up nicely now, nicely for the summer. And uh, yeah, it's going along good. Looking forward to a good afternoon. I can see the comments in the crowd, of me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, well, uh, I'll, I'll get, I'll get you as, as a, what I normally do when I have a guest on to introduce the beer. Um, but I'll just, I'll just get on with the comments first before we do that, Raggy, and then we'll. Uh, we'll, we'll on. So we got, we got Scott in the house. Hello, everyone. Hope you're having a Good great evening, Sunday. Been looking forward to this one for ages. Um, beers by Josh. Time to dig out the bottle of the old peculiar under the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chris's beer reviews. Hello, Chris. Good afternoon, all. Benjamin James, I'm at work. I should be home with a beer. Or oh, sorry, working on a Sunday. Oh, I do feel sorry for you. Yeah. Rough with a smooth, I guess. Um, Bullman's beer reviews. Afternoon, both. How are you doing? And then Benjamin, afternoon. Scott, get that's my Sunday sorted. And then Silush, <laughs> hey. Negan, afternoon, all. Right, okay. Reggie, what are we drinking? So, today, from Yorkshire, Old Peculiar. Now, if anybody knows that there's a, quite a bit of history with Feakstons and Black Sheep Brewery, the Feakstons family. So, yeah, one of the, you know, a very decent, old-fashioned beer that stands the test of time. Good dark beer, 5.6% legendary ale, unpasteurised and cold-filtered. Luckily, my beer room's really cold. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty chilled in here for me. That's probably, probably de decent serving temperature. Yes, oh, definitely, yeah, spot on temperature. I actually did a, um, a battle between this and the Big Belter the other week. Yeah, and another good beer. Still cracking beers. And uh, yeah. the, the family history of this beer is really interesting, if you know it. I don't know a lot of it, only, only a few bits I've got off the internet. But, yeah, it's a, an interesting um, bit of fun in Yorkshire. Yeah, I mean, for me, for me, the beer, the, the beer is a solid classic. Um, it's one of the best English strong ales going for me. I, I'd, I'd group it safely with the likes of something like 1845 from Fuller's, which, again, is, is a favourite of mine. I don't know. I don't know about you, but. Oh, yeah, good, I love it. Bottle good, condition good is brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Just a, a, a decent, a decent, well-made quality traditional beer, really. Um, looking forward to it. Looking forward to doing a collab with you, mate. Yeah, the first one. It's like my collab virginity has been broken. <laughs> <laughs> For sake of a word. <clears throat> right, let's get the glass out. Ooh. Shark and Bruin. Hello, everyone. How are you doing, Kev? Uh, Ken Beer Reviews. Cheers, guys. How are you doing, Craig? Uh, Benjamin James. This is my first bet that got me into drinking. Never used to light lager do now three bottles of this and my night was sorted and then uh, scott says i haven't had old peculiar in donkey's years good beer good beer yes. and for those watching i can actually pour a, pour a beer decent at times There we go. I've got the raggy paw. <laughs> <laughs> That's my <laughs> usual, that is. I'm usually terrible at pouring. I, I always get the uh, the flake um, thing with it. You know, it's... Uh, here we go. Let's put that there. There Just made a lo 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 little tweet. I've got, I've got, basically, I've got a bar... And I've got a piece of wood going up, pallet, and a piece of decking going out so that it sits further away. And then I've just put a bit more pallet here, just there, for that to sit on. And little tweaks, daft little tweaks. Makes you know, all the difference. But it, 
you know, when I'm drinking the beer, people can see what you're drinking, they can see the wall, and then they can see the beer in front of you as well, and my little face as well. Nice, no, a, nice little, a, a nice little atmosphere you've created, mate. It is. You know, this was all lockdown. You know, these all this was eight-foot pallet boards. Basically ripped them apart, and I had no idea what I was doing, and I didn't even use a spirit level. So, And uh, good, good thing it's level. Or if... <laughs> And uh, I didn't have a drink that day either, so I was all right. And uh -huh. I just built it, made sure it was 100% sturdy, you know, into the beams at the back. So there's no chance of it wobbling or anything. Because with about 300 or three to 400 bottles on it, I wouldn't want them falling. No. God. No. You'd be in tears. <laughs> I'd go straight down on my knees if I saw that all just collapse. I, thought I couldn't cope with that. <laughs> no. No, that'd be it. I'd go. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice to talk to somebody who's also got their own beer room. I mean, obviously, I was I was listening the other week. Twenty by fifteen, your room. Yeah, that's a yeah. nice room. That is. Yeah, I tried. I tried to be a little bit greedy, and I, and I did initially want a snooker table in here, but they're just I couldn't. I, you wouldn't be able to get around the table and play properly, so I, I had to opt for a, a nine foot pool table. But still, have good fun on it. You know. Good for can't be that, can you? Nine foot. I mean, I did have a pool table in there at one stage, but a little one, and uh, the shed's not that uh, straight, so it's uh, I had to get rid of the end. <laughs> oh, okay, beer. Cheers, it's a great head you've got on that. <laughs> it's going down slowly, slowly but surely. There we go, move that to one side. Oh, doesn't that hit this spot? Lovely, dark. First beer of the day, and you can really taste it. Perfect temperature. Yeah, it's lovely. It's, it's, it's very, very consistent as well. I've never had a dodgy... I normally buy a four-pack of this every now and again. Yeah, the, the, the cans... And and get a, get the odd bottle every every now and again sort of thing because it is a really really steady classic ale. I love it. I love that sort of like fruity maltiness in there, mm. almost toffee like. It's funny because some beers, I've obviously I started real ale drinking probably about the year two thousand. Um, no, two thousand and nine. Sorry, not two thousand. Um, about 2009, 2010 and then I went to work at Sainsbury's for five years and uh, you know, I wish I'd have done beer reviews back in the day but do you find that some of your favourite beers from nine years ago, you drink them now and they just aren't as good yes yeah Newcastle there's, Brown there's, a few, there's a few beers that fall into that and I know um you know, I'll, I'll come out and say it, and I know you've got a lot of respect for the Witchwood Brewery and their mm. Hobgoblin, yeah. um, which is literally a stone, well, I wouldn't say a stone's throw. It's probably about a 15-minute drive from where I live, the Witchwood Brewery. Right, in um, and uh, for me, that beer has changed over the years, no end. When it first came out, before the Marston's takeover, it was a banging beer. I mean, it's still good now. It's still steady, but it ain't. It, it's a shadow of its, of its former self. And when it was uh, independent. Yeah, it's funny that because I've got a lady who I used to work with and she she loves all the tap rooms in Nottingham and uh, she, she loves, loves a real ale. You know, when you get that, the, the beer festival books, she'll scan the pages. Well, I do as well. And she'll be picking out all the ones that she wants to, you know. And for her, she said the same thing. Only a few weeks ago, we was on about Ob Goblin. That Ob Goblin is not the beer it was years ago lots of people coming on um not yeah. the beer it was years ago and it's a shame yeah. it, beers. It, it, is, it is it is it is a shame um I'm, I'm all for i'm all for growth and stuff like that you know and and, and spreading the, the love but i think when when a when a, a big brewery comes in and absorbs a little brewery and then decides to get the recipe book and go back to the drawing board that i don't like you know, if they're all for getting the checkbook out and buying the brewery, 
they should be allowed to let them get on with what the what they're making and, and not tweak anything to to save money. You know. Well, a lot a lot of the times with that, you know, breweries they buy breweries because of the name of the brewery. I only have to look around Nottingham, and uh, we have got. Hopefully, they'll all stay small, smallish. And stay as they are because we've got Black Iris, Neon Raptor, uh, Totally Brewed, Castle Rock, Lincoln Green, Blue Monkey, and the list goes on. And, uh, you know, you don't want to see any of these breweries getting brought out like the old Shipstons did back in the day. And now there's, 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 there is there's there is a Shipstons resurgence, but it's not the, the real Shipstons. They just took the name over. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when it's you've so got... Uh, when, when you've got sort of like, if you can take, if you take Yorkshire and London out of the equation, you've yeah. got these lovely little pockets of, of breweries, microbreweries up and down the country, and Nottingham springs to mind, and Bristol as well, where you've got this yeah. nice little hotbed of, of breweries making absolutely cracking stuff. And I mean, Neon Raptor for me, they're, they're definitely up there. They're fantastic. They are. And Black Iris as well. I've had quite a few beers from them, and it's, it's cracking stuff. You know, the, you know the funniest thing? I've never actually been to either of their tap rooms. Uh, you'll be seeing it now when this lockdown's over. Well, that's what we're on about doing. So on the Friday, October the 15th, we're on about going to Robin Hood Beer Festival. A load of us from my channel and other beer reviewers, funnily enough, going to, um, and then on the Saturday, going around tap room. So my wife won't see me at all that weekend. So we've got uh, travel, travel and brews. He says, Raggy, Raggy's had a trim. Yeah. <laughs> so Raggy... well. Scott, Scott says, how many has Raggy had beforehand? None. <laughs> None? He's, he's, he's behaving today. Uh, I've got the wife and my daughter here all day, so I haven't been able to have anything. Uh, beers by Josh, aha, uh, Steve Brune channel. Hello, guys. Hope you're good. I'll be pouring a beer in a sec. Good. What's your poison today then, uh, Steve? Uh, Jim's guitarist, thumbs up. Uh, Scott, got to love a beer shed. Uh, all you lads, a decent beer shed. So, uh -huh. I want a beer shed, but my garden is too small. I have a beer attic then. Go up in the attic. You know, you could, you could turn a 6 before shed into a little uh, beer room. Run electrics to it. A plat bit, you know, bit of insulation. That's all this is. This is just a shed. So insulation. I put that foil insulation. It's not the greatest, but it keeps stuff out. Plasterboard. Yeah, Got electrics in, and uh, I'm going to get my son because he's working as um, an aircon fitter. He work, works in the aircon trade, and uh, when they get a, 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 an old unit that's still usable, get them to slip me an aircon unit in here, so I can have a, a bit of aircon in the shed. Yeah, that'll be nice. Then I won't have to worry about gas bottles keep going out on me as I'm as I'm doing beer reviews. Oh, the old gas bottle thing, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's been yeah. fun these last few weeks. I've never done beer reviews all the way through winter, but uh, you know, with, the, with having this beer award, it looks right. I mean, doing beer reviews in your kitchen with eggs behind me, you know, it, um, it's not yeah. the same. Oh, that's how that's how I started out, mate. I started out in the kitchen with just a couple of glasses behind me, and I did that. I did that for about three years, maybe, maybe longer yeah. than that. And it was only it was only moving to here where it all sort of like happened. You know, it just everything fell into place. I did it. I, well, I, I tried to convert my garage to begin with in in the old house that I was in, and I, I tried to turn that into a man cave, and it it didn't quite work because of the 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 roof you know you've got that blooming old old-fashioned uh roofing on top of it yeah yeah, yeah the sheets and it's just damp damp coming in and stuff it weren't it weren't good it was all right in the summer but winter it was it was a no-no i mean luckily in here little gas fire that i've got when, when the gas bottle don't run out on me it, you know it makes it quite cozy in here if i if i warm it up a little bit before i'm then in the summer months you get the other extreme where it's you come in some days. I mean, one day I had three brews on at the same time: Evil Dog by Bulldog Brews, Woodford Zed Cracker, and there was another one. I think it was Mangrove Mangrove Jacks Grapefruit. Uh, their Elvis Juice Clone. So I did them one day. Went to work and it was a blazing hot day. I come home, walked into the shed. It was a war zone. 
there was um, beer everywhere. It just looked like, you know, and all them free beers actually fermented in two days just because of the sheer heat of the, in the room. But yeah, pushed it along a hell of a lot quicker then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were fantastic beers, to be fair. All of them, you know, turned out brilliant. So, for those at home, you know, if, if you're going to brew in your shed, do it in the summer months. Then off, uh, brew quicker. Get get a beer quicker. Oh, you can't be a beer. <laughs> you need something to get you through all this uh, COVID and, uh, you know, all the tr what's going on. Although, we're on, we're coming on the home straight now, thankfully. Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah, we, def we definitely turn the corner now. We've definitely turned a corner. I think on on on, on COVID and on, on on the weather as well. I think we've, we're over that sort of ill now, which is good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen I've seen enough of the winter. It's been it's, it has been a long winter. Uh, I don't I don't like it. Never, never have done. Cause, well, like you, I work outside for a living, and it's it's not nice working out in the bloody cold when yeah. the sun's shining. It just it, you just get a spring in your step naturally and mentally as well. I think it just helps. And it just, uh, you know, the it first thing, it? yeah, it does, it does, it does, it works, it works a treat for me anyway. Uh, beers by Josh, you've got beer pumps in, then Dean. We've got two beer machines, and that, that's just a, a a little bit for show there, probably ain't there. Yeah, it's just an old fixed and beer pump that I, I put onto it. Um, uh, Phil says, Nice to see you, thank you very much, Phil. Uh, Steve just did a video of the Broadside Two Raggy. That's again. That's another good. That's a, another good beer, isn't it? The Broadside. It's a beer that just defies logic. You know the taste in that, um, similar to some of the very best beers. They they might be old beers, but they can they can go against the craft beers. Adnan's Broadside is just unbelievable. Yeah, drank at the right awesome. temperature. There are some really, really good traditional beers out there on the supermarket shelves, and they're yeah. they're, they're very reliable and the price point's spot on, isn't it? You know, most of them are on these four for six deals as well, so you can just you know take your pick. I mean, you you look Fuller's eighteen forty five, like I said, that's an amazing beer. Old Crafty N, yeah. Uh, old Tom, Old Tom, um, yeah. Ginger Tom's pretty good as well. Quite like Ginger uh, Tom. I absolutely love Ginger Tom. Yeah, it's probably the best of the ginger beers that aren't true ginger beers. I mean, if you've had Wanga, the ginger no. beer, the New Zealand, yeah, it came over from New Zealand. It was in Owen Bargains. And uh, I've never tasted a ginger beer like it. The fire in that ginger beer defeats every other ginger beer. You know, it's, a, it's an absolutely amazing uh, ginger beer. Although last week I did actually review from Vocation Brewery, their rum and ginger stout, an imperial stout, gifted to me by Mersey Beers, and uh, an absolutely stunning, I think it was 10.6% um, ginger beer. It was certainly a raggy beer, you know, it was, a, it was a proper treat. One of them beers, and now I've watched you, so I know you're the same as me, and I've watched other beer reviews. When they're reviewing something that's special, Quick Bear Reviews, is who's watching, who was on the other week with you, he drank the Imperial Banoffee. I think we, we all did reviews of it, a lot of us. And But when you're watching somebody drink a beer, it's the spot. All of a sudden, they'll smell it. And all of a sudden, there's a little faint smile. And you, they, they, you already know what's coming. And you drink the beer, and it's like the biggest yeah. smile comes on your face. And you know straight away from that second that it's the top beer. That, 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 that's, that's what it's all about when you get them sort of magical moments as well. When you, when you, you turn the camera on, you get a can or a bottle you ain't had before, crack it open, pour it, and when it all goes to plan, that, yeah. you know, the, the beer is absolutely, it takes you back, it, it puts you on the back foot almost because you're so surprised with what you're getting from it. That's, to me, that's what it's all about. It's, it's just finding them sort of like magical beers out there, and there's bloody loads. There's loads. We'll, ne yeah. we'll never run out of beer doing this. That's no. for sure. Even if I tried to review all of Nottingham's beers and just stayed on Nottinghamshire beers, I would never ever catch up because they're releasing beers at, at such a rate of knots 
yeah. you just can't catch up. And then it's you like think the, around the country, the now, market, it? yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah, a fantastic it's hobby. Mm. Oh, it is. It's, 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 it's a mighty fine hobby. Costly, but, you know, it's worth it. The, the reward is worth it, I think, at the end of the day. I mean, I'm lucky, really, because um, we've got me, the wife, we've got three kids. Two, one's left home. She's got well, my, my second grandkids on the way uh, any day soon. So I've even been put on a, or put, told now that uh, I've got to be careful about drinking, having too much beer in the evening, because uh, in case we get the phone call, Oh, you've got to come down and pick up me, yeah, my grandpa. Yeah. But um, yeah, with, with regards to paying for beers, it's um, yeah, such a, it can be really costly. I mean, sometimes the other day I, I twenty five beers from low cost beer, and uh, you look at the price and you think to yourself, oh, I splurged a bit there, and uh, you know I don't I don't take any money out the, uh, the, the what I bring home. Only through like doing a bit of gardening or yeah. internet work do I, I I bring the cash in. So I can understand that when people hit a thousand subscribers and they stick an advert on the front of the video, fair do I suppose because uh, it just helps bring a couple of beers in. Yeah, that's that's all I see. It just just, just pays. It just pays for a beer order. That that that's any way I go for it. Um, I was saying to Rod, more or less exactly the same stuff yesterday um, with, you know, put an ad on at the, at the beginning and, and forget about it. I don't want to sort of bombard it with, with adverts. And that just helps just to get a few beers in at the end of the month, that's all. And I think, I think that's OK, really. You know, I, I like um, a channel called Theme Park Worldwide. Brilliant channel. The bloke knows his stuff about books. He's got the one at the start, which I can take. I can take the one at the start because I can just knock it off if I really want to. Yeah. But then you've got them every 10 minutes and it's like, Jesus Christ. And it gets to the stage where I turn it off and I think, can't be bothered to watch it now because it's yeah, too I, much. I, I found that it, 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 is, it is a little bit of a turn off. When, you, when you've got, um, it doesn't matter if it's a beer review or whatever you're watching on YouTube and it's a bloody advert every couple of minutes, you just think, I can't be bothered. Sod it. Yeah. You know, skipping yeah. bloody adverts for a bloody 10-minute video, not having any of that. No, no. Oh, it's good if you want to wee, you know, good to go, go and get a wee, I suppose, but uh, other than that, it's an annoyance. <laughs> yeah. No, but one, at, one at the beginning and maybe one on the back end of it, that, that'll yeah. do, I think, you know, at tops. But, that, you know, some people don't see that sort of logic, I guess. I don't know. Back in our comments again. I... I I can see them because you know because I've got my laptop set up. I can see all the comments coming in. Yeah, they've, the just poured, they've just poured in. I'm, I'm miles behind. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'll just ring the half time bell because Slurpy Dave Bushy's Brewery has asked me to. So, <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> It doesn't stay where you want it to, though. From from the comment that I just read before, it it, it just it moves over, and then you have to sort of like backpedal. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I, that's probably the only thing with comments, isn't it? It's um, on Streamyard. Yeah. If if you've got somebody with you, then it's all right. Yeah. But when you when you're sort of like you know, I don't want to be rude to you, and I don't want to be rude to the people that are watching. So it's it's getting that balance, you know. I'm the same. When I'm doing live beer reviews, because I have, I've what, I used to watch it on my phone directly. But then, you know, if you miss a comment, it winds me up, so I have to go back to my phone and see. Yeah, up. yeah, that's, that's it. And I, I don't want people to take offence that I've skipped a comment and not, and not, not sort of gave them a mention or anything. Um, and so now, I think... I, I, oh, now I can actually see the comments as they're coming in. So having the laptop is brilliant. As long as I, I keep pressing it now and again, just to stop it from going off. So Phil says, I like a drop of that. Tolga Chabuk, I do apologise if I said your name wrong. Hi, cheers, man. Uh, Liam, evening, lads. Evening, Liam. A gym guitarist, if I had a pub shared, no one would ever see me again. Yeah, you know, I get that sometimes from my missus. She'll, she'll poke her head around the corner, look through the window and go, come on, you've been in here <laughs> far too long. <laughs> 
I've already pre-warned the wife. Pre-warned the wife. I says, I'm going to be down the shed from about quarter to four to whatever time. And then I've got the live beer reviews at six on my own channel. And that could be another hour and a half. So it could be three and a half hours down the shed. But she knows. Yeah. And as long as, as long as I don't go back up the house steaming, then she won't give me a bollocking. Nah, I won't, no. get, I won't get this. The red red card. Card. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll, we'll run for about we'll, we'll we'll take it to about an hour or say something like that because I've, I've got to, I've got to do dinner anyway and stuff like that. So uh, uh, I'm cooking Scott, dinner later as well, funnily enough. <laughs> Steak, yeah, mushrooms, garlic chips. Oh, jobs are good. Uh, look at punk Ch changed beyond belief over the years. Yeah, an another beer that that that's a shadow of its former self, I guess. Did you ever have Sadler's Christmas Pudding Stout? The one out of own bargains? b &M. uh, Yes, yes, I did, yeah. I don't think I reviewed it, but I had a bottle of it. If you had it last year, it was 6%. When it came out this, this year, and the people, a lot of people on my channel will know this, it was 4.5%. And it went from one of my very, very top beers to... Basically, a nothing beer. You know, it was still a nice beer, but you know, because mm. I knew what it tasted like, and then the change and dropping the ABV for me is not a good thing. You know, in in the run of things, I'd rather pay more than drop the yeah. ABV. Yeah, put 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 the price up a little bit and and yeah. keep the ABV as it is. It it seems to be all the trend now, though, doesn't it? With some of these big beers, where they where they're knocking the ABV down out of a lot now. You just lose taste. There's, I know it's not all about, it's not about the ABV, but when that beer was that, and yeah, then they changed it. Yeah, if yeah, it came was. out and it was four and a half percent, jobs are good. But not, not, not when they change it. It ruins a good beer. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you get, you get certain beers. It, it'd be like this. It'd be like playing about with this. Yeah. You know, 5.6% uh, ABV. It always has been. And it'd be like knocking this down to four and a half or five percent. It wouldn't be the same bloody beer, would it? At the end of the day. No, no. Something's missing. Something's when you, missing. When, yeah. yeah. When you're used to that type of beer, you're gonna you're gonna know it. You're gonna see it. And that, to me, it does kill the beers. I mean, Punk IPA. They've done it. Um, who else has done it? Some others have. I think um, Stella. Well, that's been knocked down, hasn't it? Stella Artois. Yeah, it has. And uh, Richwood, again, Bar Humbug. That was actually quite strong. Then it went down, and now it's just disappeared, which is sad. You know, let's hope that after COVID, they all come back, all these beers. You know, Bar um, Humbug is a nice beer. Never had it on tap. I'd love to try it on tap. I need to get out more, get out the shed more. As it were. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think I've had the Bar Humbug. I think, I think I've had the, the Halloween beer that they do. I've had that on tap a few times. Dunkel Festa. That's it, yes. The Dunkel, yeah. Yeah. Which again is, is not too bad actually, even in bottle form. I mean, I know Aldi were knocking that out a few years back. You know, quid a bottle yeah. on it or something silly. Up to two years ago, they had it, they had massive pallets of it. And then it then it disappeared last year. It was Green Kings, Gangly Ghouls, which to be honest, wasn't a bad beer, to be fair. And uh, yeah, it was a nice beer. But again, it's it's worrying when they're getting rid of beers that sell well. I don't understand, as a beer fan, you know, because I'm only a fan, I don't understand why you would get rid of a beer that sells by the bucket load. Yeah. No, I don't I don't get the I don't get the logic in it myself. And I know um Sainsbury's, my, my local Sainsbury's, um, they stopped the the Verhein Stefana, the uh, the Hefeweiss beer from Germany. Yeah. They've always had it in there. Ever since I can remember, discontinued it now. Because it, what, what, it just disappeared, and I went and I went and asked somebody. He, he was stacking a load of beers up on the shelves, and I said to him, "I said, I said, have you got any Valheim Stefano?" And I haven't seen it for a couple of days. And he, he said, "Oh no," he said, we, "We've knocked that on the head now. We're not we're not selling it anymore." I don't know if that's down to Brexit or not. I don't know, but uh, well, disappointing. The only good thing about working in supermarkets is that I, I do know um, that supermarkets basically. Um, you know, a lot of the products, when, when they run promotions, then promotions are done months in advance. And 
if they say, I mean, at one stage, Sainsbury's fell out with Diageo, who are the people who make Bailey's, Guinness, and a hell of a yeah. lot of spirits. They fell out with them uh, because Tesco is basically, Tesco is basically, um, at Bailey's cheaper than Sainsbury's. And uh, what happened was Sainsbury's refused to have their stuff. There was a bit of a spat. And um, a lot of it, sometimes, you know, when, when things go from supermarkets, it's politics that, yeah. at play. Not the fact that it's not a good seller, which is quite interesting. You know, when you work in a supermarket, it's very interesting. I mean, I worked on beers, wines and spirits, water department. That was a beer reviewer then. Oh, dear. I'd be saving so much money on beer, you know. It's like a kid in a street shop. And I mean, I am now, basically, but... Um, yeah, uh, Sainsbury's, um, they're ready for a major range review again, they are. They did one 10 years ago when I, when I worked there. And basically, they got rid of two-thirds of the line from start to end. And it's ready for another one. Yeah, it, they, I mean, I, I do I do embrace their sort of like revamp of their beer shelves of late. But I yeah. think they came to the party ever so late. You know, they should have jumped on the bandwagon when Tesco's were knocking out their first wave of beers. I mean, when you look at the supermarkets, going off on another tangent, um, Morrison's by far the most impressive of the supermarkets, with Tesco's behind them. Then yeah. same, and Asda, well, Asda, you walk into Asda, and you, I walk down the beer aisle, and it's like, oh, God. Same beers, yeah. walk past, straight Play. out. You blow the bloody dust off some of the bottles in in Asda, don't you? Because they just haven't. It's just stagnated, haven't they, on the shelves? What what they've done, really? You think to yourself, don't your beer people actually want to get new beers in? Because everybody, adults are like kids. You know, we all want to walk in, see something new. Oh mm. no, I'm having that. Especially if it's a box ticker, and you think it's a box ticker, and uh, I, I don't understand why they don't refresh. But also supporting local breweries as well. Sainsbury's are terrible at supporting local. Um, at least the other three, big three, actually do support local. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've noticed that with, I mean, Waitrose as well. I think they've got a pretty good selection. They they yes. do some, they try to sort of support local, from, from what I've gathered anyway, from where I, the, the ones that I've visited up and down the country. They've got regional breweries, regional, you know, old school ales in, on the shelves and stuff like that. And I think that's good. Just just to give them a little push up, isn't it? And get get the volumes out. Well, it's about helping the community. I mean, in in, in COVID, for me, the supermarkets, you know, they, they could have helped out massively. You know, you've got all these breweries around the UK not producing stuff. You know, you could set up mini bars to selling draft beer in supermarkets. It's not hard to set up. Or just having a pallet of their beers and say, look, here's a pallet. You know, come in, grab a local beer. And they could have done that. They really could. Yeah, yeah. I'll just go back onto the comments, uh, Billy. Right, yeah, I'll let you be. Yeah, Jack Reed. Uh, cheers for the live one, Dean and Raggy. Old Peculiar is one of my favourite ales, so looking forward to your thoughts. It's it's about her. It's about her. Uh, Sam FC, what's everyone drinking today? What's everyone drinking today? <laughs> We're me, me and Raggy are on the sixth. Uh, Craig says, I've got in his chain so much over the 10 years. Yeah, it has drastically changed, which is a shame. Uh, beers by Josh Scott, what do you make of the new 5.4% punk? Have you had that lately? Uh, no, I've not seen that yet. No, no, I, I've not seen it. I'm going to Tesco's tomorrow night to buy all their new beers. Hopefully my Tesco's going to have it in. Or I might have to go on, on a trip around different Tesco's to see who's got it in. That that pisses me off a little bit as well, where the, 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 the logistics of it all, where, yes. where one, one supermarket has the whole range and then the next one or the next county... Yeah, bugger all, or they have a couple. Yeah, I mean, I've had this with little, little at Christmas with their. I wanted to do the Belgian box set again because you know, as as your channel gets bigger, there's beers that you reviewed years ago that didn't really get noticed, and 
and as a reviewer, you're you're you you change. I've changed a hell of a lot since my early days, uh, older, and uh, <laughs> and you know I wanted the there was a six pack of Belgian beers at Christmas, and I know loads of the lads got them. And I went on, and I could not find it anywhere in nothing. I mean, it's like, don't advertise if you're not going to get it to all your supermarkets. Because it's yes, a waste it, of journey. It's bloody annoying now, because you walk in there thinking you're going to see a, a pallet load of them. I had, yeah. I had it with the, the lid all around my way when, when it when it came out. Went in there, couldn't bloody find it for love of the money. Wanted down a manager in there. He said, we ain't got it. You know, that was it. We ain't got it. I thought, fucking hell, I've seen all these adverts of, you know, decent quality Belgian stuff. What was it? Twelve ninety nine for the box or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stick the twelve. It's a steal. It is absolute steal because they're all they're all high strength quality beers. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, definitely. I mean, the one the little again, they did a Bell Bellhaven box set last summer. I think it was last summer, it might have been summer before now. <clears throat> But there were six beers in there, and every single one of them was a box ticking beer, you know. And that's from Bel Air, but who part of Green King, which um, you know, Green King have got their own likers and dislikers. But the beers were amazing, and that was six for a ten. Yeah, uh, luckily I got that one. Bel Air and Best, I think I was my my most recent sort of journey down that road with them, that brewery. Which was all right. I think it was a kind of a three point eight percent bitter. It was all right, you know. Did the job. I think it was about a quid a can. You can live well, with you that. Can't hold it, can you? Not that yeah, you can't it. Uh, Scott says, "Hope you're well, Craig." Um, I will see if I can get a relatively fresh one here in the states. Uh, all good, Scott. Thanks. Hello, Scott. Josh, I think the new punk is better than the 5.6%. More hop here. Okay. Uh, Wayne's Beer Deliveries. Hey, Dino and Raggy. Cheers, fellas. A couple of ESBs for me and then session in Guinness again. Oh, you there. Yeah. I used to be able to drink a no end of Guinness, but I, I find it a little bit heavy sometimes now. Guinness is one of those that I'd never tried until oh, a few years, well, about five, six years ago. It might be longer than that. The wife bought a can to make, make a, a pie. She never, she never did make the pie. So I thought, oh, let's have a crack at this then. And uh, for me, it's probably the best uh, introductory stout out there, I think. You know, to get you into stouts. Yeah. It's, it's an yeah. introduction. Yeah, and and I, and I, a nice gate, gateway beer to get 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 you into better things. Definitely, you know, as 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 you go on, there are beers. I mean, like me, I, at one stage, if, a friend of mine bought me Hogarth, and, and I drank it. I was in a pub in town in, in Nottingham, Berlin, famous pub in Nottingham, and we'd all been on the beers all night. And uh, he bought me. I said, "Yeah, I have a pint of this." And he bought this. What the hell was this? And oh god, and it took me three hours to drink it. I was sipping it, it was like, oh, but you know, because someone's bought it, you're trying your best to drink it. Yeah, and, uh, I sobered myself up on that, you know. <laughs> it was, oh, yeah. Nowadays, I can get all the taste, and I actually, I'm, I won't say it's a top 10 bit, but it's actually very palatable now. I can stand it now. Yeah, amazing now. Your palate, you've you got to, you've got to persist with certain beer styles, haven't you, as you're doing this. Um, what I know when, when I first, before I started reviewing, and it was a case of just being curious and trying new beers, I ended up ordering some some imperial stouts, and I just couldn't handle it. It was it was just the booze, just I couldn't. Ugh, it was horrible. Hated it. But now imperial stouts is probably one of my favourite beer styles. I appreciate it a hell of a lot more. The palate has adjusted over the years. And come to terms with it, and and, and I, I just absolutely love imperial stouts now. I'm the same, actually. You know, I, I, this this my favorite, probably my favorite ever beer that I've not reviewed is from Liquid Light in Nottingham, and it's uh, their Interstellar Galactic Rum and Raisin Stout. Um, I've had it at Robin Hood Beer Festival, and it was I think it was 14, 
And the funny thing was, at Chris, just before Christmas, I think it was November time, and uh, on their Facebook they said, tonight, 7pm, we're going to put the, we've got 700 cans of this Interstellar. It's going to go on sale at 7 o'clock. So I thought, 20 past 7, I thought, yeah, I'll go on, get myself, snag a can. In four minutes, they'd sold 700 cans. And this is a local brewery, not 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 like the, the Cadbury's Cream Egg debacle yeah. that's going on at the moment, and uh, which is stupid in my opinion. But, you know, and you think to yourself, that's 700 at £13 a, a can. A lot Could of you money. imagine if they had the foresight? Because obviously, you don't know what you're going to sell. So you, you don't want more stock than you can handle. But could you imagine how much they would have made if they'd have had like 3,000? Oh. Which yeah. brings me on to the Cadbury's Cream Egg debacle. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. Uh, yes, we've got to talk about that. We've got to talk about that. So you've got one of the biggest breweries in the world um, behind Goose Island. You've got Cadbury's. You've got the fact that we are in a real once-in-a-generation pandemic. So you bring out something like Cadbury's Cream Egg Beer, you know, I know, that it's going to sell massive. It's going to resonate with women, men, uh, drinkers of all ages, because it's like Easter egg in a can. It's yeah, like... yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And what did they do? Was it something daft like 500 double cans? And yeah, like... went, went, went in 60 seconds, didn't it? 60 seconds. And, I, and I've been reading comments on multiple... I've watched some of the reviews on different channels and people are saying, I had it in my basket and it's gone. Yeah, um, no, I, I was there. I was there on, on, on that Wednesday, 11 o'clock. I went onto their website and I did. I went through all the procedures, two cans, 10 quid, I had to basket, proceed to check out, put my, my Google Pay thing in. It started processing and then it came up out of stock. I was like, ah, oh, fuck it then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was hoping that you'd see pallets in supermarkets. They should have gone straight to the supermarkets. They, they've got, they've got the the umph. Goose Goose yeah. Island or AB InBev. They've got the umph to mass produce that beer to the hills and and roll it out in the supermarkets. And they should have done that straight away. Yeah. Um, they would have sold. sold. It would have yeah. sold. Yeah. Yeah, in, a, in a gift pack, maybe, or, or you could have you could have had single cans on the shelves, or, or done it in a gift pack with a glass for for ten, twelve quid, or whatever. And I think it would have shifted myself. Um, yeah, it's daft. Like, you can't understand it, the business behind it. You know, it's only a case of putting a bit of extra money into it, getting it out. We we'll watch next year. They'll have loads next year. I think I think this is the guinea pig year. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's a little bit of marketing behind it and a little bit of, you know, let, let's let's just test it and see what happens. And obviously the response that they've had, it's like, well, I mean, it's sold out in a minute. So to me, that's that's a positive. That's it. You know, let's tick that box. It's it's well received, you know. I mean, for me, we need and this is this is, you know, breweries around the UK need to get more themed beers out. Morrison's at one stage, they were great for themed beers. We'd have Christmas beers, Halloween, I think Easter beers at one stage. And yeah, now, yeah, yeah. it's all gone a bit, um, you know, tits up in some ways with it. You know, the they seem to have stopped. And I don't understand the reason behind that. Strange, yeah, strange, strange thought processes in some of the supermarkets. I mean, if I was in I, charge I, of the I've, I've, well, I've, I've tried. I've tried thinking about these sort of things before, and you just go around in circles with ideas of, of what people are actually thinking at the time. Um, you know, seasonal beers. I think it's a good thing, it, yeah. and it just put, it, it groups everything out. I mean, again, going back to Witchwood, they did an Easter beer, wasn't it? Was it was it Easter Easter hot cross hot cross buns? Was it or something like that that they did? Never seen that one, though. Yeah, with like a little rabbit on the front. That's before yeah. they did that that rebrand, which is dreadful. They should have kept oh. the old branding, but that's a, that's another story. <laughs> yeah, I was on about that last night as well. I, was, I hate the new branding. Yeah. It look, it's just fucking bland, isn't it? It's horrible. Yeah. And they've dumped off the range as well, which is ridiculous. Yeah. 
I used I like to like ginger beer. beard. Ginger beard was a pretty good beer from that. That's still around, that is. But uh, our way, oh, Black Witch, they're gone. Black Witch. Black Witch. Stunning beer, that was. Really stunning. Okay, Jack Reed. I have some old peculiar here, but I'm drinking Vorsteiner. I'll maybe have a, an op with you next. Um, but yeah, Vorstein is all right. That's pretty de pretty decent pilsner. Solid enough. Hey to everyone in the chat, Wayne's Beer. Uh, the important part about beer shed, uh, aside from beer, is electrics. Uh -huh. well, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, you've got to be a bit a bit sensible with the old electrics in a shed, haven't you? Yes, definitely. Luckily, my old man's electrician, so I'm all right. Uh, my, my mate, um, he's an electrician, so he, I basically had it on an extension lead to the shed. I got some armoured cable from work, acquired it from somewhere, ran it down to the shed, buried it and ran it down to the shed and in, and then had an extension lead on it. And what he did, he came and he used all these wires and wired it all up. So I've got the lighting, I've got sockets all the way around, and it still runs off that same lead. <laughs> yeah, fair play, fair play. Uh, Lol Dean, I could have beer at it, but that's too small. I have a beer room, yeah, as, as long as it works, mate. As long as you've got your little sort of like getaway, that's that's all it is for me. It's just a nice little getaway. Switch, switch off from the bloody world. Exactly. Um, can beer reviews hide that? Hit the like button, legends. Thank you, even though I don't do any of that jazz, but hey. Uh, Fair play. I'll, I'll take that. Uh, I'm drinking... I'm going to drink Old Peculiar in a second. Evening all. Got a voice dying for tonight. Good evening, Simo. How are you doing, man? Good evening, folks. All right, Simo. Simo. All right, Slurpee. Everybody saying hello to each other. I can see why bloody Simon gets in a bit of a, a diver when he gets bombarded with comments. It's, it's bloody hard work. <laughs> Well, it's funny with him, cause Simon, because I was watching Central TV, you know, one day, um, about three or four years back, and uh, all of a sudden this bloke comes on and uh, he's reviewing beer, and I thought, I can do, I'm, I'm sure I could talk about beer it's in in some fashion at least. And uh, he was the he's what spurred me into going into beer reviewing. So whatever I've done since then, you know, he was the one that was the catalyst because I'd already got the camcorder. And uh, obviously confidence is a thing, but um, and that spurred me on this course. And obviously, I've always been a fan of beers, you know. And it, and it's a cracking excuse to go down the stairs and have a beer. <laughs> I think he, I think he resonates with a lot of people back then, and he did with me. I'll, I'll put my hands up. He, he was one of the first guys that that got me interested. Yeah. Um, and then, and then support-wise, I probably have to take me out off to, to Rob at Hop Scene. He gave me a lot of encouragement back then. Um, Harry at Blue Nose. Adam's Craft Beer Channel, who sadly is no longer doing it anymore. Um, he was another guy that, that gave me a little bit of a push. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's good to sort of like, when you, when you look back and when you first started and, and where you are sort of now, yeah. It's um, it's an it's a good little journey. It's a good little journey. It's it's it has been a, a great journey. Even, even the last I don't know since, since I got this new job, and I got away from a very dark period in my life. You know, the last say seven months since I built this, and all these little tweaks you do. I mean, I've even got T-shirts with Raggy's beer reviews. I mean, I was gifted the bell, and I was gifted this. That's off the line, and these little things they just all you know it makes an experience then obviously yeah. personality as well you know your personality and there are some amazing people i'm pointing to the new laptop there's some amazing people out there who there come is. on beer reviews yeah. and they're just as much of the beer review as you are you know it's a community it's a passion, it's a passion isn't it it's, it's a passion and and this I mean, is just uh this is just a sort of like a, a tool to to express it you know, just just put it out there because there's, there's there's loads and loads of people out there that sing off the same hymn sheet as 
the likes of me and you and all the other guys. They, they've got a passion for good beer mm. and trying new stuff all the time. And that's what that's what it's all about to me. Yeah, that's why I just keep buying and buying. I mean, I need to crack on with reviews, really. I've got that much. I need to stop buying beer, but, you know, I'm like, I, I can't help it. When I, when I go yeah. on certain sites, I go to local sites and I see new beers. I go to low cost and I see new beers. And I don't need to go anywhere else because you've got the supermarkets and them two. And uh, that's it. That's, my, that's me done. I, I don't really need to go anywhere else. Mm. And then just recently, I, I had people, and this is really, it's weird for me, that they gifted me beers. And uh, I had a surprise beer haul from low cost. And uh, a good friend of the channel, I can't name him because he, he don't want to be that bloke. But a good friend of the channel actually sent in, sent me like 37 beers. And, uh, you know, as as acts of kindness go, that was unbelievable. And then even Bullman beers and Mersey beers sent me some beers as well. And it's like, uh, you know, it's totally humbling. You know, yeah. I'm just some bloke in Nottingham, you know, who likes a bit. <laughs> no, you've, I mean, again, I'll been, I'll been back to... to uh... What, what I was saying yesterday and, and I bring it up again with regards to what Craig at Camp Beer Review said, you're, um, you're a breath of fresh air to all this. You really are. You don't take it too serious. You've got a passion. You can see that you've got a passion um, and, and you, you, you're proud of what you're doing and you are a breath of fresh air to it all because you're not, you don't take, you don't take yourself too serious. You just roll with it. God, no, no. And, this is, and to me, and to me, that's what it's all about. Oh yeah, to this is just my um, my uh, hobby when I get home. I mean, I've got gardening to keep me going when I'm at work. So, um, hobby when I get home. Plus, you no know, family as well. You know, this is it's like you. This is my uh, bit of escapism. Hmm. And, and you I need to switch off. off. You do. Yeah. You, you need to switch off or disconnect from the real world sometimes because it's it's a bloody hamster's wheel. And to and to just lose yourself for uh, 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 an X amount of time doing this is good. I think it's yeah. good for the soul. Definitely, definitely. You've got so many comments. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> right, where are we? Where are we? Uh, all right, yeah. People saying hello to each other. Um, Works well with split screen thing, chaps. Very good. Thank you very much. Tad and drinking partners. Chris M, he's laughing. 42 watching, whack that like button. <laughs> um, Phil says, put, but I've had three San Miguel specials before. I haven't had San Miguel for ages. Oh, I do like a nice Spanish beer. When I'm over in Spain. Could get another 20 people on the screen. <laughs> I find that, that, it odd. I find it audible too. When, yeah, that, that, I've been, I've been I fall apart then. I, yeah, I fall apart. And there's, there's probably a couple of guys that are watching now that probably know that. A, yeah. Anything, anything groupy, I can't, I can't do it. I just, I just end up not saying anything. I don't uh, like to cut across other people talking, and uh, I like them to get their thing out of the way. So. I feel bad that I'm cutting across their conversation. So I went on uh, Kent's Bay Reviews, his live stream on Friday, his eight o'clock mega live stream. And I do find it, I find it better when there's that, just two or three. Once it goes above a certain number, I'm, I'm a lost in the wilderness. And plus, because it's on my phone, I can't see the screen. It's like, you know, at the moment, we're both about the right size. I'm all right. Yeah. You know. But uh, only two men, and it's like, I can't see it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just, I've, I've always found it, I've, I've tried, I mean, in the early days, you used to do quite a bit of it, like a, a group hangout and stuff like that, or a three-way collab review, um, but now, I, I, I don't know, maybe it's confidence, I don't know, I don't know, like you said, you don't like talking over people, you might, you feel, probably feel a bit rude. Yeah. It's, it's hard to sort of like sync it all together, isn't it, you know? Uh, Steve says, Hi, you guys. All right, Scott and Wanda. Hey, up, Steve. All right, Steve. Hey, Steve. He's getting a lot of love tonight. 
Hey, Todd. You know, just a lot of people saying hello to each other. A very good. Just finished my Sunday DIY jobs. Now time for homebrew. That's yeah. Great brew broadside, says Chris M. Uh, I'm fine. Had a few from the 36 pints of Bushy McMahon's cloak this affy. Okay. All the beer, no idea. Baz, now he's another guy that you want, you want to all check out. Oh, Barry from All the Beer, No Idea. How are you doing, lads? All right, for some drinking beer while I'm working 10 minutes and having a cuppa. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you'll make up for it when you get so. <laughs> Steve says hello to Barry. Scott says buzzing in hide. Stop in. Baz, it's bad when you're at work and having. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. Yeah, it goes on and on and on. <laughs> I do like it, though. I, I, I must admit, I, I, I do really appreciate all the people that are taking the time to, to come on and, and watch and leave comments. Um, but like I say, it's, it's a little bit of a balancing act because I don't want to just be focused on my laptop and ignore me, my lovely guest, Billy. <laughs> yeah, it's a balancing act, isn't it? Uh, that's why um, That's why I've set this laptop up to my right-hand side, so that I, when I'm doing like my own lives, I can actually see everything coming in now. And if I've missed the comment I don't, that I don't see on my phone, I can see it on the laptop straight away as well. So as long as the laptop don't keep going off on me. Um, and it's great. It's it's great. I like, I like to have a setup that I can, you know, as good as I can get, you know. I mean, I tried the webcam on the um, laptop yesterday and the picture was so awful. You know, being an old laptop, and it, I looked and it looked like I was in, you know, 20 years ago, so I had to bottle it. <laughs> so I, I'm getting instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your yeah. dinner instructions? Yeah, more or less, yeah. Yeah. Right, beer. There's only a little bit left. <laughs> there is. So a lovely malty beer, hints of fruit, and a beer that is, you know, it's for me, it's a beer that has done well and still doing well. And you know, let, if anybody from Featstone's watches, don't don't touch this beer. No, you know, don't do what the others are doing. Stay on leave it, the stay good on stuff, Leave the good stuff alone. I mean, all these years, when I was at Sainsbury's, it was there all the time. It's in all the big four. It's there for a reason, because it is top quality beer. Oh, yeah. No, no shadow of a doubt. Um, they've, they've, it, it, for me, it's mission accomplished, because it's a beer that you respect and you'll go back to. You'll buy it again, time and time again. That is the, the, the key part in all this, isn't it? Whether you'll return to that beer again and purchase it. And this all day long. This this will always be in like a, a I say a, ro a rotation of regular beers, and it's yeah. worthy of that. It is. It's worthy I of mean, that. It's solid. As a reviewer, um, I, I'm sure you probably find this yourself that you'll have a beer, you drink it once. Yeah, it might have got a great score or or great review off you, and then you think, yeah, but I don't want to drink it again. And a lot of beers fall into that one-off category where you drink it once. Well, that's it. I've done the review. Don't want to touch that again. Where some beers, and it's and it, it is the supermarket beers more than anything uh, that stand out as the ones that you go back to time and time again. And it's yeah. not just not just the craft stuff. It's mainly the bottle stuff because bottle stuff is the predominant in all the supermarkets. Mm. And uh, there's some amazing and and also price matters. You know, oh yeah, big time. Point. Yeah, I mean uh, the the price point in this, like I say, is the majority of it is it's in the the four for six pound. Yeah. So if you want to four of them, I'd quite happily buy four bottles of that. Wouldn't have a problem with it. But then it's mixing and matching, isn't it? It's that curiosity of of trying new stuff and and all that. Um, I again, it's it, it's what frame of mind you're in, isn't it? With how you want to go, sometimes. I don't know about you, but sometimes I can't be bothered to turn the camera on and do a review. So I just want a beer like this, which I know is going to deliver. 
Yeah. Off camera, you know. Yeah. I mean, I've got the same, but I've got the same in homebrew. So I've got at the side of me. No, that's wine. So I've got Amarone wine, Italian fine wine there. Put that one away. I've got my Imperial Russian Stout from Love Brewing. I tell you what, you know, if you ever went into home brewing, that's absolutely amazing. Um, you know, when you want to find a bottle, you can't find a bottle. No, that's another wine. So I must have drank it. But um, I've got an American oak aged rum ale that I brewed. Young's. So Young's of um, double chocolate fame and... Uh, Oh, there's a few more of their picks. Why is it when you want to remember, you can't remember the names? And then they'll come to you later. Um, but, yeah, that's what I do. When when, I, when I'm not... If I haven't bought multiples, I'll just drink homebrew. Yeah. Because I don't want to drink review stock. You know, if I bought it for review, I'm not drinking it. Because unless I've got multiples, then I'll drink it. Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've gone along that sort of trailer for myself where I've... I've had a can of beer that's been staring at me all week, and I'm thinking, I, I want to, tr I want it, I want it, but I really want it to to review. Yeah. I want to turn the camera on, and I want to sort of save you that moment of of actually reviewing it like that. And it's hard to resist sometimes because you think, oh, when you're in the mood for a beer. Oh yeah. I mean, there's times when you get home from work, you've had a bit of a crappy day, you think, I'm not doing a beer review tonight, I'm not, I'm not drinking tonight. You've had a day at work. And that's me most mornings. I'll get up in the morning, especially if I if I've drank too much by myself. Oh, he's froze. He's froze. I'll catch up on the comments while he's uh, not saying out. Uh, oh, you froze then, Raggy. Here we go. Oh. No, you're back on. You're back on. Is it me or is it you? I don't know. I don't know. But... <laughs> my, my connection does drop now and again, and it's ever so annoying. And, and but I think it must be something to do with YouTube on my end. Ah, bloody Gremlin. Gremlin's in the system. Gremlin's in the system. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get through all these comments anyway, and we're, we're probably going to have to wrap it up now because we're just, just over the hour mark. Um, yeah, I, I do. I do seriously apologise for all the guys that have took the time to leave comments that haven't been read. Um, but so many, and it's it, I'm I'm a bit taken back by it to be honest with you. It's um, I can see, I can see all the comments here. I mean, you've got Steve's Brewing, Liam Musco, Scott and Wanda, Steve Brewing again, and Window Beer Review, Chris Bears Reviews, Tavern Drinking Partners, Ale Degustation. Yeah, Christoph, Matt, good man, good man, Christoph. Clive Evans, and that's just the recent um, chat. So yeah, thank you everyone for chatting. I yeah, can see you, um, but I don't. That that that's absolutely immense. That the uh, you know, I mean, thirty eight people watching at the moment now. I mean, that's that's fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic for people to take the time to do that. Um, lovely stuff. Um, again. Big, big thank you to, to you, Billy, mate, for taking the time to, to do this. It's it's much appreciated. Um, yeah, it's nice, two, to, two, nice to chat with you. Two and a half years late, I suppose. I mean, it was about two and a half years ago. When I, well, about two years, eight months now. Lord's yeah. Brewing's just come on as well. Good evening. Um, hey, John, how are you doing? And, uh, yeah, it's... Um, I mean, you came to me two and a half years ago, not long after I started doing with you. Yeah. And obviously... I, I wasn't brave enough then. And then obviously I had a, a, a real year of issues, you know, mental health. For all everybody out there who suffers with mental health, you know, it, it can be tough. Talking and, you know, the beer reviews were my way. Of, one, of having a beer, you know, a sneaky beer, as it were. But also talking about what I've gone through. And um, it helped. You know, I've had people saying on my channel, saying, you know, you've helped me. Well, it's vice versa. You know, it's not certainly not a one-way thing. You know, um, yeah. it's been good. Yeah, no, um, I'm I'm glad I'm glad you finally evolved to to, to what you are now, and and then and, and to come on here. Um, it is much appreciated. I, I understand me reaching out to you. You know, two and a half years ago, I I, I get all that now, and I I respect it. Why you didn't, you know. 
yeah, um, yeah, because you know, the person I am, nice, easygoing person, obviously, anxiety is something that you just have to deal with, funnily enough. But, um, but uh, this last month or two, it's actually what really broke the back, I think, was doing the lives in December, you know, the advent calendars. And me being me, I bought two advent calendars. So every single night, two live reviews, and then a sneaky third review if I could get away with it. And uh, <laughs> and since then, I've built up a, a friendship with the likes of Mersey Beers, Bowman Beers, Kent Beers Reviews, and other beer reviewers. You know, there's a lot of people, so I do apologise to everybody out there if I've missed your names. Scott Bit, Scott and Wanda, obviously, as well. And, you know... There's so many great people, and it's nice now to actually be in the community. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's been good. Been good. Yeah, long, long overdue, Braggy. Long overdue. Yeah, no. <laughs> and okay. you know, in some ways, if I'd have come two years ago, I'd have um, it probably helped me massively when I was going through the dark period. So yeah, you know, yeah, you live and learn. It, it, it is, it is what it is. You know, it's 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 done now. You're here. You're in. You know, you're in the sort of like group i guess you know you, the community yeah. people are aware of you people know who you are you do a bloody good job you do a good job um and you don't take it too serious and that's 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 the important thing you know you you respect beer for what it is you do a good job so i'm i'm very grateful that you took the time to to, to do this for an hour and six minutes much appreciated well, thank um, you thank you Thank you for inviting me on. You know, no, I mean, for me, you're one of the icons, and uh, you know, he's gone quiet again. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. He's gone. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap this up. Much, much, much appreciated. Thank you to everybody that's took the time to leave a comment down below. Um, we'll, we'll, well, I guess we can do it again. There's no. There's nothing set in stone, but I mean, to be honest, um, I think I'm going to do one with Kent when, 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 or oh, Craig. Yeah, yeah, get on with Craig. Get on with Craig. And uh, you know, go round and uh, just. <laughs> Game over. Game over. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs>